today. From U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, this is Madden Football on EA Sports. Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, it's a black and blue matchup in the NFC North between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. Mason Crosby set to do the honors here. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew, coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is back for his fifth year as Minnesota starter, tied for the longest streak of stability the team has had at quarterback since. Get this, Fran Tarkenton in the late 1970s. He's been excellent during that time, making a second Pro Bowl last season after 4,200 yards and 33 touchdowns through the air. The Vikings, though, still hovering right around 500 at the eight-win mark, hoping to see him lead a talented roster back to the postseason. They start the drive with Cook, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. Cousins now. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And this will wind up being a third and three. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Now Cousins. And a throw there going to be incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Jordan Berry out to punt on fourth down. Thirty-six yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Packer football here. First down and ten. Green Bay's offense trots out, and just as it has been since Week One of the 2008 season, Aaron Rodgers leads the way now in his 18th year in the National Football League. Even as he nears age 40, Aaron Rodgers' game isn't taking a single backward step. He became only the fourth player to win back-to-back -back MVP awards and led Green Bay to its third straight 13-win season. He avoids turnovers better than anyone in football. The quarterback position 
and Green Bay, they are always a front runner with him under center. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10, just shy of the 30. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. First carry now for A.J. Dillon. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. time with Jones and he is going to lose yardage here stop behind the line made by the safety that time Lewis seed we knew both of these safeties were good in run support but how about the play we just saw there how about that closing speed able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Throwing is Rodgers. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. Given three on the screen, he couldn't break free, and it's third down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively, and the key to any screenplay is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle it for just a short gain. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Rodgers going to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm quite sure that they envisioned a much better start to this game when they practiced all week. But they failed on that third down play. That brings up fourth down, and they'll probably have to punt it away. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Play fake, Cousins. Eluding the pressure right. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It'd be interesting to see what he decides to do the next time he's in the position we just saw there. Outside of the pocket, takes a throw downfield, it turns up incomplete. I wonder if next time he might take off and run. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. To throw, Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
19 yards that time for number 19. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. They go play action. Cousins. Open man. Once again, it's Thielen. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Adam Thielen, a terrific wide receiver and synonymous with Minnesota football. You go back to high school, college ball in the state, and now his ninth season with the Minnesota Vikings. Ten touchdown catches last season. Makes a nice catch there. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10, down at the 33. To throw is Cousins. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll throw again. Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he gets it inside the 10 to the nine. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run, gets him 15 yards. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. No score after one on EA Sports. So first and goal from the nine-yard line. Cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. He's at the 50. The 30. Past the 20. And he will bring this one back. A fumble return for a Green Bay touchdown. And that's a linebacker showing he can move pretty good with a football in his hand. That's not just a short shuttle now. He took it and went a pretty good distance, didn't he? Did you get the 40 time on that? <laughs> I didn't, but he got six points out of it. I know that, and a great play for that defensive unit. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six.
And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And this fielded right at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And they've got to be still reeling from the events of a moment ago. What a turn on that last play. You knock it on the door. You're about to take it in. You think you're going to get some points on the board. Instead, you cough it up and watch them take it the rest of the way to the opposite end zone. That's a two-score swing that you just gave up. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Second down, they go right back to Cook. And he'll get about two there to the 36. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. And has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. Cousins to throw it. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Jaron Reed muscles his way in for the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Rodgers. And this is caught by Watkins. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. Robert Tunyon, the intended target, and it's third and short. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now it's Rodgers. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. And he is going to have a Packers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of the quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver.
Now a first down carry by Jones. And he is going to lose yardage here. The speed of Jordan Hicks on display there as he gets the tackle for loss. Well, that was not what you would call straight line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside. And he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Rodgers going to give this one to Dillon. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for him. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. And the Vikings are going to beef up their secondary here. Six DBs on third. From midfield, here's Rodgers. Wide open is Watkins. He's got him. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 26. That one goes for 24 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And meanwhile, Rodgers' throw finds its target, Dobbs. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Rodgers now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But he certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. And again, it's Rodgers. He finds Watson complete. The Packers are going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Working from the gun, Rodgers. Catch made by the running back, Aaron Jones. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing again on second down. Rodgers, touchdown, Packers! Robert Tunyon, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Packers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. 
And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Now Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was Robert Tunyon capping it all off on the touchdown grab. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. down here's Cousins and that is incomplete oh, the coverage a little too good there and it's second down and I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game he's had his way so far but on that last one that worked quite well for the defense so now they'll come up on second and ten once again from the 28 now Cousins setting up the screen for Cook and I think we've got a hold here. It's a five-yard pickup for the moment. Let's see what our referee says. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Here's Cousins. Step, and he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Rashawn Gary. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Not wanting to risk another sack, they'll play it safe with a run. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference, as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three.
So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. This taken in at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. Well, the Packers ready to go to start quarter number three. will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And he'll begin the drive with a give to Jones. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Rodgers to throw. Tunyon's got it on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. And how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. Rodgers now on first down. He finds his man complete. That's Watkins. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. I know that no game in the NFL is ever easy, but they're making it look that way. Everything is being done with such precision. Just on this drive alone, three plays, three first downs. If you're on defense, you're scrambling, looking at each other, trying to figure out how are we going to slow these guys down. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> they would gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Rodgers looking to throw on third and two. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. Rodgers now on first down. He'll find Lazard here over the middle. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. 
That sure looked like a nice call by the defense and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and 10. Running right, Jones. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So they'll get the yardage on the run and get 15 more for good measure. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult to spot. You heard the sideline erupting, and the flags came out almost immediately. So the face mask moves him closer, and now first and goal. Rodgers again now. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Dylan is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. Can this Vikings D hold up one more time? Third and goal. To throw is Rodgers. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Romeo Dobbs from three yards out. And the Packers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Crosby with the extra point, And that makes the score 21 to zip. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. And he'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. 
It shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. Just work with me a second here, because in my lifetime, seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football, I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay. But now, you need to be 65 to 70% to be considered an elite quarterback. And in this ball game, I feel like we're playing old school, right around 50%. Yeah, he's under 50%. He needs to start hitting more targets. On third down, Cousins. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Well, they've certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. Cousins on first down. Complete, Jefferson the target. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Oh, now an injured player down there, and this is not what you want to see. That's Justin Jefferson who's having some issues. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Play action now, Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Cousins gives way to Cook, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Rashawn Gary, the man to bring him down. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throwing on second and eight, Cousins. Now the Packers give him nowhere to go and they bring him down. Rashawn Gary able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. But one thing I do know, these guys on defense, they don't want this game to end. They're winning by multiple touchdowns. They've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. They'll drop to throw. And this one complete to Smith. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. 
so much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. Well, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. First down throw for Cousins. Open man is Osborne. He's got it. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Options galore here, second and a few inches. To the air again, it's Cousins. It's caught on the right side, it's Smith. And he'll be out of bounds. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. That's a nice job of working his way open down in the red zone. Looked that one in and then made a beeline for the pylon. He didn't quite get there and you want to give him a little extra for the effort, but instead he sets his guys up in excellent shape with a first and goal. Cousins now. And this ball is caught by Irv Smith. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And the Vikings are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21-7. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it's polished off by a Viking score. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one's going to be covered up by the Packers' hands team. The risk-reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position leads you to that type of play calling, and whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage is switched to their opponent. down Rodgers over the middle here it's hauled in by Watson and he'll go down but not before getting this inside the 30 that one good for 20 on the catch and run well that should be a reminder defensively and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run there's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air even on first and second downs and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there
On first and ten, here's Rodgers. His throw incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll try the right side with Jones. Down to the 25. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And this offense on third down today, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and eight. Rodgers going to throw. And that is incomplete. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. The kick by Crosby is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. Taken in at the three. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Osborne. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. To throw again on second down. Cousins, throw left side complete. That's Osborne. Seven yards there and a first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Cousins now to throw on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now Cousins. And he wisely will throw that one away. 
not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Cousins again. Throw caught there by Osborne. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Running for it, here's Cook. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it'll be a turnover on downs. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. An inside give to Jones. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. A great stop by D.J. Wadham to back the offense up on that play. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. That flag accepted and it backs the offense up a little bit. And right side, they're going to go option here. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. On third down, here's Jones. And he'll get it down here to the 43. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So it's all over. A Green Bay victory. And it was their defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control.
So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.